Across the world, there are about 60,000 deaths per year from rabies, but there's only one to three per year in the U.S. Now, why is that? Well, in many developing countries, like India, which has 25,000 to 30,000 reported cases a year, dogs are not routinely vaccinated. And rabid dogs bite people, and that's where you get the most cases. In the U.S., we vaccinate dogs against rabies, and that knocks out a huge source of infection. It's the most effective method of prevention that we know of. But there are other ways to get infected in the U.S., mainly bats, as well as raccoons, skunks, foxes. So the second most important prevention method is to avoid all of those. But failing that, there's something else that's really important to know about. Remember how rabies has that long incubation period? Well, it turns out that if we intervene during the incubation period, we can actually prevent the disease. So if we think someone has been exposed and might be incubating, we begin an intensive protocol, which we call post-exposure prophylaxis. And I'll tell you exactly what that protocol is, but first, what exactly qualifies as an exposure? There's no easy answer to that. It depends on a lot of factors, including your location, what animal you were exposed to, whether you were bitten, etc. But to give you an idea, any time you've been around a bat and you don't know 100% for sure that you haven't been bitten, because bat bites can actually be really small and hard to notice, that counts as an exposure. If you're bitten by a vaccinated dog in Manhattan and it's a provoked bite, that's not an exposure. If you're bitten by a feral dog in India, that is an exposure. Now note that if you have an exposure like I described to a bat or any other potentially rabid animal, you can still avoid getting post-exposure prophylaxis if you're able to somehow collect the animal and get it tested or observe it and show that it doesn't have rabies. But barring that, you need post-exposure prophylaxis. So what is it? Well, it's the following. First, wound cleansing, where the wound is the bite. Second, four doses of rabies vaccine, the first one immediately and the next ones in the following days, although you need fewer if the person's been previously vaccinated. And the idea here is to give a big boost to the person's immune system while the rabies virus is incubating. And third, you're going to give rabies immune globulin administered around the wound and also intramuscularly. Now, if you don't know where the bite is, you still give the immune globulin, but make sure you don't give it in the same spot as the vaccine because you want to avoid all of the immunoglobulin binding to and deactivating the vaccine locally. Now, you can skip this whole step if the person has previously been vaccinated against rabies. Now, this is pretty complex, but rabies is so serious that most places have 24-hour rabies hotlines that you can call to guide you through this whole process. So that's post-exposure prophylaxis, and it's very effective, almost 100%. So that's the really good news about rabies. Now, you might have gotten a little confused when I said rabies vaccine, because you might be wondering, why don't we just give everybody the rabies vaccine since rabies is so deadly? And the answer is, we don't because, one, it's expensive. Two, it requires a lot of shots, and the logistics are difficult. And three, since only one to three people get it in the U.S. each year, it's not worth it. We only recommend the vaccine for vets and other professions with a high chance of exposure. 